So hello everybody, and it's a great pleasure that we have Shafnin Luno today, mm -hmm. uh, and he would be speaking to us on something very interesting and uh, uh, about topological pumping and its relation to quantum entanglements and also measuring some aspect of it. And uh, so over to you, Shafnin, to tell us about it. Um, yeah, so so thank yeah. You. Thank you very much for the invitation. So it is a great pleasure for me to, to talk to you about my uh, work on uh, topological pumping. So my name is uh, Jacques Lavino. I am a PhD student on the, from the ENS de Lyon in France under the supervision of uh, David Carpentier and uh, Benoit Dousseau. So first, uh, let's ask the question of uh, what is uh, pumping? So in pumping, we have uh, two components. So first, uh, the pump itself, which here is represented by a screw, and the environment. So the screw rotates and induces a flow in its environment. So it can be a flow of charge or water or energy or particles. And topological pumping is when the pumping rate comes from a topological properties. This means that it, this pumping rate will be quantized and uh, very stable. So uh, here is uh, the outline of, uh, of my talk. So first I will uh, present some historical examples of topological pumps where we focus on the dynamics of the quantum system. And uh, this quantum system carry a topological properties. And in the, in the pumping uh, language, this quantum system corresponds to the screw which rotates and not to the pumping it, itself. What I will show is that when we connect uh, this quantum system to an environment, this topological property translates into a pumping phenomena in the environment. So with uh, this perspective, what we did is to uh, develop a general framework of coupling between uh, fast quantum degrees of freedom coupled to a slow classical degrees of freedom, such that the pumping is seen as an effective dynamics of the slow classical degrees of freedom, rather than a topological property and a, and a property of the dynamics of the fast quantum degrees of freedom. And with this, uh, with this framework, we proposed an experimental realization of topological pump where we can directly measure the pumping, which means directly measure the dynamics of this slow degrees of freedom. And then in the last part of my talk, I will extend this, this framework to a full quantum description where we have a full quantum system made of slow quantum degrees of freedom and fast quantum degrees of freedom. And we will see that we still have a notion of topological pumping and we will understand much better in the, under which circumstances. And we'll see that we can propose a new use of topology to measure the entanglement between the different degrees of freedom. So first, let's uh, let, uh, discuss about some historical examples of topological pumps where we focus on the dynamics of a quantum system. So the historical example is uh, the quantum hole effect. So in the quantum hole effect, we consider a two-dimensional electron gas for which we apply a strong uh, perpendicular magnetic field. And um, what uh, von Kinsing and uh, collaborators uh, uh, discovered experimentally in 1980 is that for high value of the magnetic field, this electron gas act as a pure transverse conductor. This means that when we, we look at the conductivity and the resistivity tensors, so we apply an electric field and we measure the current density of charge. What we saw, what uh, von Klinsing uh, saw experimentally, that at high value of the magnetic field, we see some, some vanishing of the transverse resistivity and which are accompanied with plateaus of the transverse resistivity. So the system is a pure transverse uh, conductor. And the value of these uh, plateaus of resistivity are given by some fundamental constants 
time one, one over a number of phi here, which was measured experimentally to be an integer with an extreme precision of 10 to the minus 10. And uh, for example, since uh, 2019, this uh, extreme precision, the quantum hole effect, is used in the new standard for the international system of units. So soon uh, after uh, this experimental discovery of the quantum hole effect, this uh, extreme precision was understood to come from a topological property. So Thales and collaborators showed that this number C is a topological invariant. It is an integer, which is a topological invariant called a Chern number. And so the quantum hole effect was the first experimental measure of a topological invariant. So then, soon after uh, the theoretical explanation of the quantum hole effect, Thaoles proposed an extension, a theoretical extension of this quantum hole physics. We are now, we no longer consider a two-dimensional quantum system, but a one-dimensional quantum system. So particles in a one-dimensional periodic potential, but with also a dimension of time. So the potential is periodic both spatially, but it is also time dependent and periodic in time. And what uh, Thaoles showed is that uh, we can observe in this, in this case, an average group velocity for particles in such a potential, which is quantized in average with the same topological number C, which is a chain number. And then uh, much, much later, so much more recently, uh, such a solid pump were realized experimentally with uh, cold atoms, where the uh, potential, the time dependent potential, is uh, obtained by making interfere two laser beams and mo modulating their wavelength. And uh, the experimentalists put a cold atom cloud in, th in this potential and measure the drift of the center of mass of, of this cloud. And what they measure experimentally is that the center of mass of the cloud will drift <coughs> linearly in time in average at the, at the velocity given by the topologically quantized group velocity. Uh, Jacqueline, yes. uh, is it uh, related to this uh, anomalous velocity that comes from the... Hello, Dikvijay. Yes. So we are meeting today, right? Yes. So, so yes, it, it is, it is ah, very good, very good. the anomalous uh, velocity, exactly. And what, what we will see is that actually they are uh, both uh, some, uh, some uh, realization of the same kind of physics. I mean, we understand with a general formalism, kind of, with, our, with our general formalism, a kind of unified potential view for this different uh, system. And so, yes, uh, actually, it will be related to the anomalous velocity, which uh, we see in the quantum hole effect. Yeah. Okay. And so, so then I, I will uh, discuss a, a third, a third uh, example, which was uh, a, another theoretical proposal um, proposed uh, even more recently in 2017 by uh, Martin and uh, collaborators, where now they no longer consider a two-dimensional quantum system or uh, as in the quantum hole effect or a one-dimensional quantum system as in the Thaoles pump, but a zero-dimensional quantum system so a two-level quantum system, but which is driven at two frequencies. So we have a time-dependent quantum system, two-level system, driven at two frequencies. And what uh, Martin and uh, collaborators uh, did is to analyze the dynamics of such a two-level system using the so-called uh, Floquet theory, which uh, consists in uh, studying the dynamics in an abstract space of the harmonics of this driven Hamiltonian. And why they derived is that in this abstract space harmonics, they derived a quantized velocity, another occurrence of, an, of a velocity, of nanomalous velocity, but in this abstract space, which was interpreted as a quantized energy transfer between the two modes, omega one and omega two, which drives the, the, the two level system. And this energy transfer is again quantized topologically with the Chern number. And uh, last year, this kind of uh, physics was uh, simulated using an experimental quantum simulation. 
by uh, Marth and uh, Smith, who used the IBM quantum computer. So with this uh, quantum computer, they can, uh, they can manipulate an artificial atom, an artificial two-level system, uh, and they can drive it at two different frequencies. And they can uh, measure the, the evolution of the quantum state of such a system by a tomography of the two-level system. And from this measurement of the state of the two-level system, they infer a work done at the two frequencies by, by considering the derivative of the Hamiltonian at the two frequencies omega one and omega two. They reconstruct a work at the two frequencies. And what they saw is that the work at one frequency increase while the work at the other frequency decrease at a rate which is given by the topologically, topologically quantized power. So what do we, we uh, saw? Can yes. I ask something about these uh, plots? Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, there are good slopes, of course. The slope seems to be quantized, but then there are fluctuations too. So yes. what about these fluctuations? Uh, we will come back to this fluctuation. We will discuss uh, them in details, actually, when we will uh, discuss uh, the general formalism to, 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 to treat these different examples in, the, in a unified manner. We will understand precisely do where does these fluctuations come from. So, okay, we'll thanks. Yes. So what we saw is uh, three three examples three examples uh, of quantum system with different physical dimensions. For so two dimension the quantum hole effect, one dimension for the starless pump, and zero dimension for the for the frequency conversion where we observe the occurrence of an anomalous velocity, of a quantized velocity for this quantum system, which come from the same topological number, the same uh, chunk number. But uh, in, a, in the pumping language, this quantum system uh, do not uh, correspond to pumping itself. They correspond to the, to the screw which rotates. But pumping requires some reservoirs in, in which Pumping occurs. So now let us identify the different reservoirs between which pumping occurs. So in the case of the of the quantum hole effect, uh, let uh, let us use and uh, and extend an argument initially proposed by Laughlin. So Laughlin considered uh, a quantum hole sample in a cylinder geometry, such that an electric field applied along the cylinder could, can be obtained by, the, by passing a magnetic flux through the cylinder. And then the small, a small electric field will come from a, a slow increase of the, many, of, a, of the magnetic flux. And so with this cylinder geometry, if we connect the boundaries of the cylinder to an external circuit, what we see is that the, the quantized whole conductivity, which relates the transverse current to the electric field, will, this quantized whole conductivity will translate into a relation between the, the current, so the evolution of the charge in the circuit, to the variation of the magnetic flux through the cylinder. So we have a relation between a variation of a charge, which is imposed by a variation of a separated flux, of a separated degree of freedom. And what we will see is that we have the, the same kind of relation of variation of a charge or, or a number of quanta related to the variation of a flux or a phase for the three examples via uh, an integer, which is a, a chunk number. So in the case of the Saulus pump, we'll have the same, but now we consider that the time dependent potential can come from the coupling of the 1D of the 1D lattice to an, an external drive, the, to a phase of a periodic drive, and if we couple the, the 1D lattice to, an, to a reservoir, then the quantized velocity in the lattice will translate into a, a current in the reservoir, and we have the same kind of relation of variation of charge in one in one system related to the variation. Of the, of the phase of a separated degree of freedom with a chunk number. And in the, in the case of the frequency conversion, we, can, we consider that the, the time dependence of the two-level system can come from the coupling of the, 
two level system to, to uh, two modes of cavity and to the coupling to the phases phi one and phi two of the two modes of cavity. And then the energy transfer, which corresponds to the variation of the energy of one mode, can be written as a, a, a current of photons, so a variation of number of photons related to the variation of the phase of a separated degrees of freedom. So what we discuss is a three example of a quantum system, which exhibit a quantized velocity. And uh, we saw that when we connect some, uh, some uh, slow degrees of freedom to this quantum system, this uh, quantum velocity translates to a pumping phenomena, topologically quantized. And so what, and what, uh, what we see is that what is important is not the physical dimension of the quantum system, so two dimension for the, for the quantum Hall effect, one dimensional for the soundless pump and zero dimensional for the frequency curvation. But what is important is the number of slow degrees of freedom, which are coupled to the quantum system. So one, one flux variable plus one circuit for the quantum Hall effect, one circuit and one mode for the soundless pump and two modes of clarity for the, for the zero dimensional pump. So what I will, uh, we, what I will present now is a general framework we, which we uh, developed in, in which uh, we can describe topological pumping as a, a coupling between slow quantum degrees of freedom to fast, to, to slow classical degrees of freedom to fast quantum degrees of freedom. And the pumping is seen as an effective dynamics of the slow variables. So let's introduce this uh, formalism. So uh, as I said, in, in this formalism, the, the quantum system, the rotating screw, is a fast degrees of freedom. So it will be associated to large energy differences. And so we will treat it uh, as a quantum system, the quantum state and the quantum Hamiltonian. Whereas the, the slow degrees of freedom are slow associated to small energy differences. And we will treat them with a continuous spectrum and a pair of conjugated variable denoted phi and n. So a phase and, and a, a conjugated number of points. And what we suppose is that the quantum system couples only to, the, to one of the two conjugated variables to the phase only. So the dynamics of this, of this classical phase is given by a classical Hamilton equation and the dynamics of the quantum system by a Schrodinger equation. And due to the coupling of the quantum system to the phases phi one and phi two, it will modify the dynamics of the, of the variable <coughs> of the number of quanta n conjugated to the phase. And so in a hybrid classical quantum destruction, we, we treat this, uh, this, uh, this modification of the dynamics by modifying the Hamilton equation by taking uh, an average value of operator. So of course- uh, Jacqueline, can I ask something here? Yes. So yes. the assumption is that that the slow degrees of freedom, sorry, I have to mute. Uh, the slow degrees of freedom are undergoing an unitary evolution uh, with the Hamiltonian depending on only one of this, uh, coupling to only, only the phase and not to the number. Yes. Yes, the Hamiltonian of the quantum system will, will depend on, will, will be coupled only to the phases. But so it's like more like a quench, no? Where you have only neutral evolution. So the, the slow degrees of freedom, they, they can have uh, their, their proper dynamics and the Hamiltonian does not only depend on the phases, they have the proper dynamics. But no, the, no, the question is, the question is, is the quantum system yes. is undergoing unitary evolution? A unitary evolution, yes. Okay, so it's, it's not, uh, so, so in, in that sense, it's like an isolated system with a time dependent Hamiltonian. Exactly, exactly. Okay. We are okay. considering a, a full isolated system, but the, the thing which is, of, which is of course an approximation is to treat different, in a different manner, the different degrees of freedom. So we have a, a full a closed system, but we treat uh, classically some degrees of freedom and in quantum mechanically some other degrees of freedom. And what we will see is that uh, we will come back to, to this at the end of the talk. But of course, this, uh, this uh, hybrid classical quantum description for, the for this full uh, closed system is an approximation. But we will see that it is, uh, 
very relevant. It, it emerged in a full quantum description what we, when we have a quantum, uh, quantum slow degrees of freedom coupled to fast degrees of freedom. This uh, hybrid classical description is relevant for very particular, uh, uh, under very particular conditions, which we'll uh, understand at the end of the talk. Yes. OK, thanks. OK, thank you. And so, so what we, we will show now is that in this uh, hybrid, uh, so yeah, so exactly. So these, these phases uh, usually they are used to consider or to impose uh, a drive on, on a quantum system. And so here, what we are precisely interested in is the back action of the quantum system to the drives. So which will correspond to a modification of the variables of the slow, of the slow degrees of freedom. And we will see that in this modification of the Hamilton equation of the slow variables, it enter a geometric and topologic called property of the quantum system. So let us uh, discuss what are these uh, geometric and topological properties of a quantum system. So these uh, properties occur when we consider a quantum system which depends on the, on the continuous external parameter. So here we have a, an Hamiltonian which depends on two, two variables, phi one and phi two. At each, value, at each fixed value of the, param of the parameter, the quantum system has different eigenstates associated to an uh, in, uh, energy, energy level. And what Barry showed is that uh, to describe the dynamics of such a, a system, we must introduce a new quantity, which is called the Barry curvature, which is a function defined on the parameter space, on the space of uh, phi 1 and phi 2, which acts as, a, as an effective magnetic flux in this parameter space. So that when we prepare the quantum system in an eigenstate associated to the value of the classical parameter, and when, when this variable evolves and comes back to the original value, the quantum state will acquire a phase, which is called the Berry phase, it, which corresponds to the flux of the Berry curvature on the surface enclosed by the trajectory. So this is a geometrical property of this, of this quantum, of this, of this eigenstate. And the topological properties it is when the uh, configuration space, the parameter space, is compact. So here, phi one and phi two will be periodic phases. So the, the parameter space is a torus. Then, analogously to the to the Gauss-Bonnet theorem, when we integrate the Berry curvature on the, on, the, on this closed surface, we get surprisingly an attenger, which is called the Chern number. So the average value of the Berry curvature on phi one and phi two will be topologically quantized, and we will see that the Berry curvature and the Chern number enter the dynamics of this uh, slow degree of freedom. So we, as, as we said, the, the slow degrees of freedom, which we treat classically, are slow compared to the typical time scales of the quantum system. So these uh, typical frequency of the quantum system are given by the gaps in energy. So we assume that the velocity of the phases are very small compared to, the, to this gap. So that the quantum system will evolve adiabatically. This means that if we prepare the quantum system in an instantaneous eigenstate associated to the initial value of the phases phi 1 and phi 2, then when the, the phases will evolve, the quantum state at the lowest order in adiabatic approximation will remain in, a, in, a, in an instantaneous eigenstate. And so when we compute the, the modification of the dynamics of N1, for such a set, what we get is a, a variation of energy of the of the of the of the of the quantum system. So this is a term which actually we uh, we expect because the energy of the quantum system will vary. So it will correspond to an, an exchange of energy between the quantum system and and the mode one. You see. Yeah. But uh, due to the fact that the, the phases do not evolve infinitely slowly we have a little contribution to the other eigenstates, which depend on the velocity of these phases. And so when we compute the, modifi the modified Hamiltonian equation with this state, we get a term which couples mode one to the variation of the phase of mode two via the Berry curvature. We get exactly the Berry curvature. So we have a geometric coupling between mode one and mode two. So what we saw is that in this, in this modified Hamilton equation, 
for mod one, we have a term of variation of energy of the quantum state and the energeometric coupling between the between the two the two modes. And then the topological uh, pumping is when uh, phi one the, the configuration space, the space of phi one and phi two is a compact. So when the phase are, are periodic, then we saw that the, the Berry curvature, its average value on the torus is topologically quantized. So if the phases phi one and phi two evolve ergodically on the torus, what we can do is to replace a time average of this pumping rate here in one dot by an average on, on, the, on the configuration space on the torus. And so we get a relation between the pumping rate in mode one to the channel number. And this is topological pumping. So the energy of mode one will vary with time. So we, we go, we, we see here this variation of, um, of energy, we, which we just saw before, which is due to a variation of the energy of the, of the quantum system. But in average, the energy of mode one will increase at a, at a quantized rate. And if energy of mode one increase, the energy of mode two will decrease. And this is a topological template. So now let uh, we formulate the three examples we saw in this, uh, in this, in this language, in this uh, formulation. So in the, in the case of the quantum hole effect, the slow degrees of freedom, which are coupled to the, to the electron gas, will be a branch of circuit, classical branch of circuit, which are used to uh, impose a current and, and, and measure a voltage, a voltage drop. So such a branch of circuits, we can describe them with a pair of canonically conjugated flux and charge variable, which are related to the voltage and the current on each branch of circuits, so that when they are uncoupled, the dynamics will be given by, a, we will describe them by an ideal LC, uh, LC harmonic oscillator. And uh, what, is, so what is the coupling between this classical variable and the quantum system? And, and, the, and, the, and the electron gas. So this coupling can be obtained by considering boundary conditions. So it was first introduced by new and, 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 and collaborators, such so that uh, effectively this boundary condition will, will couple the medibody wave function of the electron gas thoroughly to the flux variables phi one and phi two. And what is important in this coupling is that the coupling is periodic in the flux phi one and phi two. So that uh, the, the many body ground states of, uh, of the whole sample will depend on this flux phi one and phi two. And so I, as we saw before, it will define a, a very curvature and due to the periodicity, we define a charm number. And so when we look at the, modifi the modified equation of motion for the, for the charge in circuit one, for example, it will be coupled to the variation of the flux of circuit two through the Berry curvature. And so in the limit of an ideal uh, ammeter, what we get is precisely the, the quantum hole effect, which means that we have a, a perfect a transverse conductor. The current in circuit one is only due to a, to a voltage applied transversely in circuit two and not to the voltage on, on, on circuit one. And we have this relation with the topological integers. And so then we can do quite the same for the serverless pump. But in this case, the 1D quantum system will be connected only to one branch of circuit, but also to a, to a, to a, to a mode, to a cavity mode, to the phase of the, of the, of the, of the mode. And so the, the modification of the, of, the, of the dynamics of the charge of the circuit we, we contain a term of coupling via the Berry curvature, which depends on the frequency of the overload, and we get the steady, the steady current discussed before. And we have the same for the, for the zero dimensional topological pump, which is actually quite similar to, the, to, the disc, to, uh, to what we derived in details before. We have a zero dimensional quantum system, an artificial atom couples to two, to two modes of cavity, and it coupled to the phases of this mode such so that the, the modification of the dynamics of the number of quanta contains a term of, of Berry curvature and topological pumping in average. So what we, we, we saw 
is that uh, with this formality, with this uh, formality, with this change of perspective, where now we would consider topological pumping, we consider topological pumping in the dynamics of the slow variables. So we, we focus on the dynamics of the slow environment and not on the, on the, on the dynamics of the quantum system. We describe pumping on how uh, pumping occurs and not on how fast rotates the screw. And so, um, and so if we look at the current experimental realizations of topological pump, actually in the, in the case of the quantum hole effect, what was measured is uh, precisely uh, this, uh, this, uh, this topological pumping as uh, dynamics of slow variables. But because what was measured is a, is a, is a current on the circuit and a voltage drop uh, measured on the on transversely. So what was measured is precisely the dynamics of these slow uh, classical uh, branch of circuits. But in the case of the, of the soulless pump or the frequency conversion, what was measured, it was always an indirect measure of pumping because what was measured is the dynamic of the quantum system. So the dynamics of the rotating screw and not the dynamics of the slow environment. So what we did is to, uh, to propose an experimentalization of the zero dimensional uh, topological pump where we can measure directly the pumping by directly measuring the, the power, uh, the, the transfer, the transfer. So we did uh, this, uh, this uh, experimental proposal in collaboration with the quantum circuit group uh, here in the Ernest Delta. So now I will, uh, I will uh, detail this uh, experimental proposal of direct measure of, uh, of the political pumping. So in this uh, experimental proposal, the, the quantum system, the rotating screw, is a quantum circuit. It is a, a, a superconducting uh, quantum circuit made of uh, Josephson junction and other superconducting elements such that uh, at very low temperature, we can consider only a few uh, energy, few lowest energy level of such a, of such a circuit, such that it acts uh, as an artificial atom. And we can couple this quantum circuit to microwave modes. And so the, the environment is this microwave mode. And so we have one degree of freedom per frequency of the microwave mode one phase at each frequency, which is conjugated to a number of photons. And we measure the dynamics of its uh, conjugated variables in the, in the powers which we send it and which we measure out of the transmission line. So topological uh, pumping, the dynamics of this slow variable will be directly measured in these powers which we send in the transmission line. And the, the quantum circuit group here in the Ernest de Lyon is a specialist in this uh, extreme, uh, is extremely precise measure of these uh, microwave powers. So now the, the question is uh, between which uh, degree or degrees of freedom do we have pumping? At which frequency do we should we measure power? Which power do should we measure? So I, I will uh, first discuss the case of a qubit pump. So what we call a qubit is a two level system. So we only consider here the two lowest energy level of the quantum circuits. And so for such a two level system, we can decompose its Hamiltonian on the Pauli matrices. So that the Hamiltonian will be given by a, by a three vector here denoted H. And so the driven Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian which depends on the two phases phi one and phi two, it will define a map from the configuration space of phi one and phi two, the two torus, the torus, into a surface in R3. And this surface uh, of the vector H cannot touch the origin because uh, if H equals to zero, then we have, a, uh, we have a, the, the gap of the two level system will close. And we want to maintain a gap to, to maintain the, the difference of of slow and fast degrees of freedom. So, so we have a surface which cannot touch the origin. So we have a, a, a natural uh, topological property is does this surface enclose the origin or not? <clears throat> when this surface 
does not enclose the origin. It is a, such a model will be topologically trivial associated to a, to a zero chain number. But when the surface encloses the origin, then the topological chain number will be non-zero. It will be will correspond to the winding of the surface. And so uh, I will uh, not in, in uh, details, but it turns out that experimentally for uh, superconducting uh, quantum circuits coupled to microwave modes, it is difficult to implement this kind of coupling with, with this kind of condition in a, rotate, in, a, in a laboratory frame, which means when the phases phi one and phi two correspond to phases at two frequencies, which we sent in the line. So what we must use is a rotating frame where phi one and phi two are relative modes. And in this case, the, the conjugated variable N1 and N2 conjugated to phi 1 and phi 2, they are hard to relate to the powers which we can measure. So, so in conclusion, for such a, a two-level system, it will be difficult to measure directly the pumping because it is difficult to, to relate the, the, the variable we want to measure to what we can measure experimentally. So I will not uh, explain in detail why for a two-level system it is difficult to measure the, the dynamics of N1 and N2. But what I will explain is that uh, we understood that when we use a three-level system, we can relate these variables to the powers. So what we consider is a, a Q-treat rather than a qubit, which means that we consider the three lowest energy levels of the, of the, of the, of the superconducting uh, circuits. And so for such a, for such a Q-treat, in, in a rotating frame, we can engineer the Hamiltonian we want for this, uh, for this three-level system. So the rotating frame means that we drive the, the three transition of the, of the superconducting uh, circuit with, uh, with the three Uzenet modes to engineer a time in independent Hamiltonian in a rotating frame. And what we want to do then is to, uh, to slowly modulate the amplitude omega here to have an, an, an Hamiltonian which depends on two slow phases, phi one and phi two. So we want to modulate this amplitude and we do so by addressing the side bands instead of resonating mode. So we double each modes and the, and the phase of the modulation is just related to the detuning in this uh, mode doubling. And by, uh, by uh, fixing a relation between these detunings, what we get in the end is a, a, a quantum system coupled to two effective modes, phi one and phi two, which uh, physically are uh, distributed in a three plus three modes in the transmission line. So the question is, uh, what are the, the, the conjugated variable N1 and N2 conjugated to the phases? Because this is the variable we want to measure. So actually these phases, uh, phi one and phi two, are, are related to uh, phase differences between the, the different modes in a sideband. So when we do a canonical uh, transformation, what we get is that uh, these, uh, the conjugated variable N1 and N2 will be related to energy differences. And we measure that dynamics by measuring power differences. So in the end, in the, end the, the, the variable N1 and N2, which we want to measure, the dynamics will be will correspond to these specific uh, combinations of power. And so this is the combination of powers which we want to measure because these variables, using the, the previously discussed uh, uh, framework, they, their dynamics will carry a topological property. We will be associated to topological pumping. And so if we put some uh, experimental uh, number here, some typical value values for the frequency we can send in the line, what we get is that we, we should be able to resolve a change of power, a variation of power here in the order of 10 attawatts. And uh, currently, this is uh, experimentally accessible. And uh, of course, this change of power will be for non-zero chain number. It will, it will correspond to, uh, to have a topologically non-trivial pump. So here, 10 also what will be for a chain number of the, of the band of equals to four. So the question here is, uh, how do we know what is the chain number of the three bands 
of the quantum system. So to, to find the value of the Tian number of the three band, band zero, band one, and band two, depending on the five parameters in, in our Hamiltonian, one strategy is the following, is that uh, since we know that uh, a topological invariant is insensitive to the deformation of, uh, of the Hamiltonian, as long as we maintain the gap, we can find the values of the parameters such that, such that a gap closes, and that it will define some uh, separated region in the parameter space, which are topologically distant, and we can evaluate the, the charm number in each region using its relation to the very curvature. And to find, so to find the value of this parameter such that uh, a gap uh, closes, we used, uh, uh, we used an analogy between our, uh, our driven superconducting cutrix to a model of non-interacting particle on a, on a lead lattice. So what is a lead lattice? A lead lattice, it is a, a square lattice where we have one site on each, one extra site on each bound. So that uh, the, the corresponding Brave lattice of, of such a lead lattice will, will have three sites per unit cell. And so uh, using block theory, it, it's a block Hamiltonian will be a three by three Hamiltonian. And uh, in, the, in, in the analogy with the superconductive cutric, what was some detuning delta between the microwave mode and the superconducting circuit, in the case of our cutric, now correspond to on-site potentials on the sites of the lattice. What was some uh, drive amplitudes, in the case of the cutric, here correspond to hoppings between the different sites of the lattice. And we say that it is an Aldane model on the lead lattice because of the factor i, which is here in the Hamiltonian. And this factor i is obtained by, by uh, putting the magnetic flux on the lead lattice. And uh, so this analogy uh, with an, uh, uh, a model on the lattice is useful because, uh, because we can use the crystalline symmetries to find the value of the parameters omega and delta such that a gap closes. So when we, when we use this such a crystalline symmetry, what we get in the end is uh, these different uh, line here in color in the, in, the, in the parameter space for which we know that the, the gap will, will close. So uh, can I ask uh, here, um, yes. could, you, could you drive your system experimentally such that you go through such a topological transition? Yes, exactly. So we will not drive it, but we will change the parameter and we will, ex we will uh, discuss it uh, just, uh, just in a minute. Yes, precisely. Okay. We'll see the topological uh, transition. So when we have this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this line, we can just, to obtain the topological phase diagram, we evaluate the charm number of the three bands in each region. And for example, here in the yellow region, in the yellow region, uh, the band zero of the cutric will be topologically non-trivial. It will be a, a non-zero charm number, whereas the band one will be trivial. So associated to, non to no pentane. So then we can probe this topological phase diagram experimentally based on, on, on the pumping. So what we can do is that we just, uh, just before we identified the two degrees of freedom of the, of the microwave modes, the two degrees of freedom N1 and N2 associated to the topological dynamics. So if we prepare, for example, the cutric in, in, in its uh, ground states, for, uh, for, for three different values of parameters which are associated to the same charm number four for the ground states, what we see, what we, so this is a numerical simulation, but we, what we will see is that the dynamics of uh, N1 and N2, the topological degrees of freedom, will be essentially the same with, uh, with topological pumping, so energy increasing or decreasing at a rate given by the charm number. But we saw that uh, in, the, in the particle experimental realization, we have more degrees of freedom and, uh, and, and the other degrees of freedom will not be described in, in by, by, the, by, the, by the topological uh, framework before. 
and they will, their dynamics will depend on the precise value of the, of the parameter delta. So what we can do now is uh, precisely probe this topological uh, phase transition uh, by, uh, by uh, we can measure this, uh, this chain number by uh, measuring experimentally this uh, rate of pumping, this power rate in the topological degrees of freedom by computing, by measuring and getting the slope here will be just related to the values of, of, the, of the chain number. So for example, when we, when we uh, set the value of the, of the, of the parameters near point A here in the yellow region, if we prepare the cutrate in, the, in its ground state here near point A in the parameter space, the ground state is largely gapped. And so the adiabatic uh, evolution, the separation of, time, of uh, time scale between slow and fast degrees of freedom is absolutely valid. So the previously discussed formalism is valid and we will observe topological pumping at the quantized power rate. But when we, we, we increase a little bit the values of, of the parameters, what we will, what we will get, it, uh, it, we will reach a region of transition between two topologically distinct regions for the ground states. And so this is necessarily accompanied by the closure of the gap, of the, of the gap of the quantum system. So if the gap closes, the adiabaticity cannot be satisfied anymore. So the previously discussed formalism is no longer valid and we will no longer see a, a quantized power rate. And then when we continue to increase the value of the parameter, the gap will reopen with a, a distinct, uh, with another topology for the ground band. So here, a, 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 a trivial topology with no, with no pumping. And we, we see that uh, the adiabaticity is, uh, is extremely important because, for example, here near these values of, uh, of parameters, near point D, the ground state is topologically uh, non trivial, but we will not see a quantized pumping because uh, the gap is too small. The gap is too small, so we no longer see, we no longer have adiabaticity. So as a take-home message of the first part of my talk, uh, I presented to you a, a, a framework to discuss topological pumping in a change of perspective. We no longer uh, focus on the dynamics of the quantum system of the rotating screw, but in the dynamics of the slow degrees of freedom, which are coupled to this quantum system. And so this gives, this gives a unified point of view in the different proposed topological pumps. And this enables us to propose an experimental realization of topological pump, where we can directly measure the power, the, the pumping by directly measuring some power transfer. So what I will uh, discuss now is uh, an extension of this, uh, of this framework where we consider slow quantum degrees of freedom coupled to fast quantum degrees of freedom. So actually, I uh, think this seems uh, absolutely natural because uh, now we, we, we consider a, a closed system with, with different degrees of freedom. So it is, it is absolutely natural to uh, uh, Jacqueline, sorry, so this uh, uh, interrupt. So uh, before even doing the full quantum quantum, uh, the classical system can also be statistical, right? In many ways, so is sorry. there a way to... The classical, uh, the slow degrees of freedom can also be thought of as a classical statistical system. There is some approximation where it works, for example, at high temperatures. Ah, yes, yes, so uh, yes. Here in this case, indeed, we, we do not uh, consider uh, temperature. We, we have, uh, if we want, we have an, an, isol an, is an isolated system. Indeed, we, we do not uh, consider uh, temperature, we do not uh, have an external bath, which imposes uh, a temperature on the system. We, we consider, yes, a, a closed, a fully closed, fully closed system, yes, with no notion of, of temperature. Yeah, but still the classical system um, should also have some fluctuations of its own because uh, it, because the quantum variables are fluctuating, no? And there should be some way to, just on the, on the class, 
within the classical approximation itself, there should be some way to account for fluctuation. Yes. So, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so you're right. Because of the fluctuation of the, of the quantum system, yes, we would expect to 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 see some also some fluctuation in, in the in the classical degrees of freedom. But uh, actually, what uh, we we just saw here is that because we describe them classically by classical number, we did not see this fluctuation. And to see these fluctuations, actually, we we need to describe them quantum mechanically because. When in, in this hybrid formalism, when we impose that the, the classical variables couples only to, uh, to an average value of operator, in, in some sense, we killed this, uh, this fluctuation, this quantum fluctuation. And so here, we will see that exactly, we, we will have this, uh, this fluctuation in these variables, but it, it is required to treat them quantum mechanically because uh, classically, if we just consider classical variables, with no notion of temperature, so with no statistical notion, the variables are just numbers, so they do not fluctuate. So here, now, we will see the fluctuations. Does it uh, answer the question? OK, maybe, yeah, I could, yeah maybe that you answered it. I, I could think. OK, thank you. Yeah. OK, OK, thank you. So, so yes, so as we did, uh, yes, it, precisely, so for, for example, for this reason, reason we just discussed, it is natural. To consider a full uh, quantum a full quantum system with different degrees of freedom, but uh, this uh, this description this natural de description is only allowed uh, because of uh, thanks to our change of perspective, thanks to the fact that we do not describe pumping as the dynamics of of a, of a driven quantum system, but as the dynamics of slow variables coupled to this quantum system. So it requires this change of perspective. And so we will see that uh, will, uh, the, the hybrid classical uh, quantum uh, description up to, up to the fluctuation, we will recover them in the, in the quantum case in, in very specific, uh, con and under very specific conditions. And we will see that we can use the topology to be in this condition and to measure the entanglement between the different uh, degrees of freedom. So what we consider is a quantization of uh, such a model discussed before. So we quantize what we call a Floquet pump because we have a, an, a, a, what we had a, a quantum system, a fast degrees of freedom, which was coupled to two phases, which evolved linearly in time. So we quantize the phases in quantum rotators, so phase of operator with a periodic spectrum with a conjugated operator of number of quanta with a discrete spectrum. And we consider only here, in this case, a two-level, two-level fast uh, degrees of freedom. So we, we quantize this two-level with uh, two energy as the state. We quantize it Hamiltonian. And um, this uh, this uh, specific model is uh, interesting, is useful because we can uh, entirely use the previously discussed hybrid classical quantum uh, quantum model to study the dynamics of this full quantum system. We can use it when we focus on phase states, which are eigenstates of the phases operator phi1 and phi2. And the, the property of these phase states is that, uh, thanks to the linearity in N, they remain phase eigenstates. And uh, the quantum, the, the states of the qubit, of the two degree of the two level system, for such a state will evolve according to the previously uh, uh, discussed Hamiltonian coupled to classical phase. And so, uh, Jacqueline, is it the same kind of approximation, right? When you try to do Linbald equations, you derive Linbald. We will not derive the Linbald uh, equation actually. We will see. Yeah, but uh, in Linbald equations, when you derive them, you make a similar approximation that they always factorize at all times. The the two systems, two systems factorize. That's ah, one yes. crucial assumption of to derive the Linbald equations. Yes, so, so here we will not derive the Linbald equation. We will uh, directly consider the dynamics of, uh, of one degree of freedom in, in, the, in the full quantum system. And we will we'll directly uh, look at, uh, actually at the, at the variation of, uh, of N1. And we'll... So I think what is different from the Linbald case is that uh, the other system it has a, maybe a slow to react rather than fast to react. What, you, what is the so-called Bath system? That what you have your... 
your uh, this classical system that now becomes quantum will be slow so yes right and uh, yes. so that's uh, that is why you cannot apply the lin bulk but otherwise this factorization is the same kind of uh, assumption uh, that uh, one of the assumptions remains same but uh, could you tell me why you just what's the justification or um, for this kind of a thing uh, under what circumstances uh, you could justify this factorization yes so uh, actually just what uh, i just wanted to say is that we can use these phase states to describe the dynamics but these phase states are absolutely unrealistic so we will not descri describe these phase states in a, in a, in a concrete uh, in the concrete dynamics they are just uh, used to 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 evaluate the dynamics but they are unrealistic and what we will consider is a wave packet so superposition of such phase states and we will consider a wave packet a general wave packet which, which is a general state of the full quantum system and we will look at, at its dynamics the dynamics of the of the of the full uh, quantum state of the full quantum system so yes so yes uh, i will stress the point that this this these states are, are not realistic and so we we consider now a wave packet a superposition of, of these phase states and so so the now the the, the phases uh, so the, the state will have a, a given uh, extension in, in phases phi one and phi two given by uh, by the wave function chi and what we what kind of uh, of, of uh, superposition we can consider is this kind where each phase component is associated to the ground state of the Hamiltonian which is which depends on the classical phase and this kind of, of state is actually uh, natural because they are they are used in the bond open and arc approximation. And for these very uh, specific uh, states, very specific wave packet, what we get is when we when we compute the, the dynamics of the average value of n1, which is the quantity we are interested in, we will get exactly the hybrid uh, classical quantum equation of motion which we derived before. But this is a, a but which is averaged on the initial phase distribution here between the dictator chi. So for these very specific. Can explain, explain this again? Yes. Uh, so, so this assumption that you're making about the state, the initial state, that's very general, right? It's, there's no assumption. So it is not general. Uh, so this is not general. Uh, we will come oh, okay. So this is. So the in what sense it is not general? Uh, could you. So, so exactly well, what I, I, because the notation I'm probably not understanding and what is this what is what is the speciality about this initial state so the, the speciality of the initial state if the the phase component or 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 associated or ah, okay with the ground with state. specific kind of state. ah okay i see i see yes ah i see i see not arbitrary i see exactly. That's only the ground state corresponding to the phi exactly precisely. i see i see precisely in the general and your state, claim, uh, your claim is that with such initial states, you can recover the classical quantum exactly, uh, exactly. description. Exactly. So the, the 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 hybrid classical quantum description is valid only for these very specific initial states. And uh, I see. But, Thanks. but these are very specific initial states, they are a priori are very entangled between the the three degrees of freedom. So and so, uh, especially if uh, if uh, experimentally the degrees of freedom are distinct physical system, it seems uh, very difficult to prepare this kind of very specific initial states. So the question is, how can we prepare them from an integral state? Uh, can I ask a simple question? Yes. Uh, in this equation, which I can see right now, how did where is chi minus? It disappeared, and you got the churn number. Yes. How Okay, so let's go back to this question. This yeah, that, because in this thing, there's a chi minus square. Yes, in the exactly. first equation, mod, modulus of that. Exactly. So, so now we, we, we have this equation, and we use the same argument which we used before to derive uh, topological pumping is that we consider a time average of this equation now. So, when we consider a time average, if phi minus omega t. Uh, evolves ergodically on the on the torus. We will we replace a time average by an average on the, on the value of the phases, phi. And so what we will get is the average value of this term in parentheses here, 
And the, the average value of this term in parentheses here is just the Cham number. So the so, crucial thing is that you have an ergodic trajectory, right? Uh, yeah, OK, that. OK, yeah. I get the argument. Thank you. Yes, we yeah, want- Yeah, is important, yeah. Yeah, 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 pre precisely. So we, we, yes, this equation is in time average, yes. The, 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 the precise evolution depends on, on this wave function chi, but the time average will not. Yeah, exactly. And so, so yes, so, so we, we, we say that uh, we have this uh, very uh, specific uh, initial state, a very, very entangled state between the different uh, degrees of freedom for which the hybrid classical quantum description is valid and for which we see topological pumping. So how do we prepare them now? So actually what we say, what was specific is here to have the, the quantum system in its current set. But the quantum system can be either in its current state or in its, or in its uh, super uh, or in its excited state for the system. So what we just constructed, constructed is two families of states, which are characterized by two projectors p minus and p plus, and any initial state will be decomposed in these two families of uh, of, uh, of states associated to the ground state and associated to the exit, excited states. But the ground state will be associated to a, a given Cham number. And for example, if it is positive, it corresponds to pumping from, from, C, from mode two to mode one. And for a two level system, the Cham number of the excited band will be opposite to the Cham number of the ground band. So will be, will be associated to pumping from one to two. So what does it mean? It means that if we represent the, the gener a general initial state, in, in N1, N2 representation. So here I considered an initial state which is well localized in N1, so with an energy which is well, uh, well defined. This part of the state will pump from two to one. So N1 will increase and N2 will decrease while this part of the state will pump in the other direction. So N1 will decrease and N2 will increase. So in the end, we, are, we will have a separation of these two components of, of the initial state. So what we, we have is that we have this very specific entangled uh, uh, initial state in an adiabatic subspace. And, uh, we, and, and we can, uh, and, and so is, this, this, uh, this part of state is obtained from uh, an, an, an non-entangled initial state. And so this weight, in this adiabatic subspace will characterize how this non-entangled initial state differ from this adiabatically uh, entangled state. And we can measure directly this weight here, P, P minus, using the topological dynamics, because as we said, we identify two directions in the N1, N2 plane, parallel to the pumping and orthogonal to the pumping, and the, and, the, and the part of the, of, the, of the initial state in the ground adiabatic subspace will pump in n parallel negative. And so the weight in this, in this region will tend to this weight of the initial state in, in, this ground, in this ground space. So we'll be able to measure the entanglement of this uh, adiabatically uh, prepared state. And we can also prepare this, this very specific state, which is associated to an hybrid classical quantum discretion. Which is sorry, I, I, I have a little bit lost, so sorry. So entanglement here between which and which degrees of freedom here? Yes, so it will be, we will have entanglement between uh, essentially the, the modes and the, and the, and the qubit and the, and the, and, and the two-level uh, two system because because the, 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 the two level so, will not be in a, in a very, will not be in a state, will be in a superposition of state. So, so I was thinking, so you're not computing the entanglement between uh, this N1 and N2 systems. You're computing, sorry, sorry, sorry. You're sorry, you have to, okay, don't sorry, what I meant is stupid. So you're computing, you're, you need two systems, subsystems. One is the N1, uh, this class, this uh, this N one N two system, and the other one is the phi one phi two system. We are computing the entanglement between these, right? We have the N one N two system. You have, we have the N one system, the N two system, and the qubit. We have yes three system, 
and we oh there's, there's a tripartite system yes okay. exactly right yes. right okay yes because phi one and n one they are not a different system because they are just conjugating variables of, of the same system of one mode yes and we we evaluate the the, yes, the entanglement between the 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 two systems now so there's it's not a tripartite it's basically bipartite system so yes. phi one n one and phi two n two okay so you are computing the entanglement between these two degrees of yes I see. exactly exactly yes exactly okay so uh, yes okay thank you for for the good question so yes so so in in perspective so we we do have here uh, a use of topology to propose a measurement of the entanglement between uh, between the, the different sub between the three different subsystems. Sorry, I had to ask again. So how exactly you are quantifying entanglement in terms of probabilities? Could you explain that again? Uh, somehow I yes. lost it. Yes, uh, yes. So it will uh, correspond to the to the weight of the weight function, which pump in only in one direction. Because we know that we, we start from a, a non-entangled state. And if it pump only in one in, in, in one direction, we know that this uh, non-entangled state will be an adiabatic state because the adiabatic state pump only in one direction. And so this weight will quantify how, how, the, the, how the, the adiabatic state differ from the initially non-entangled state. So we have- I, I Perfect, I understand. So, so you're basically, uh, so here entanglement is also a, a, devi a deviation from adiabaticity, adiabaticity in a way. So that's how you could uh, convert that to uh, some physical observable. Yes, like, we want to evaluate the entanglement of these adiabatic states. And so we, we, we try to construct them from a non-entangled state. Hmm. If we obtain this adiabatic state from a non-entangled state, we know that this adiabatic state is not entangled. But when we, we try to construct this from a non-entangled state, we will see that it, it has only a certain part in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this adiabatic subspace. So this, this, uh, this state will, 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 be, uh, will be entangled. Oh, I see. OK. okay. Ah, OK, thanks. Now I understand. Okay, thanks. Okay, so thank you very much for, 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 for the question, yes. And so, 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 oh, sorry. So uh, in, in, in summary, we, uh, we, we, we discuss, uh, uh, I, I presented to you topological pumping in a new framework, which is uh, describing the, the, the dynamics of a slow degree of freedom coupled to a fast quantum system. And we, we saw that uh, this change of perspective gi gives a unified point of view for the different topological pump. And, uh, we can, uh, and we proposed uh, an experimental realization, which is a direct probe of the pumping. And we saw that in a full quantum description, we, will, we, recover, we recover a valid hybrid classical quantum description for, uh, for very specific states. And we can use the topology to prepare this very specific state and to measure their, their entanglement. And so I'd like to, to thank uh, the people I, I work with. So of course, uh, my, my PhD advisors, David Carpentier and Benoit Dousseau, and uh, also Pierre Desplaces and uh, Pierre Mondutrex, and uh, Benjamin Huard and Quentin Fischer from the Quantum Circuit Group for its experimental proposal. And uh, thank you very much for your, for your attention. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot <laughs> for this very nice talk. So we have no time for questions. So could you create some uh, maximally entangled state when using this uh, techniques uh, between the two systems? Yes, um, actually we, we could uh... When when we uh, when we uh, we uh, prepare a folk folk states actually in the different mode, their state will be uh, fully delocalized in phases, and what we what we saw is that to have uh, to have a, a little uh, a, a little a little entanglement, we should localize the states 
in the in the, in the phase in, in phases in fire and in fact if we are able to localize the states we can prepare the the excite the, the the quantum system at the at the value of the of the of the average of the average value in fire and in fact and when we start to delocalize but we keep one the, the, the qubit in the in these very specific states so in, in the limit of uh, infinite delocalizations for for which means a, a state localizing n1 that it will be uh, maximally uh, localized actually yes uh, maximally and i see the other question i have is that uh, here in this hamiltonian that you consider uh, n1 hat and 2 hat uh, suppose this n1 hat and 2 hat are sort of the zero modes of some continuous uh, thing, right? Mm -hmm. Some continuous degrees of freedom, like a field theory kind of thing. And then phi1 and phi2 phi are still zero modes, only time dependent. Uh, or, so are there some uh, kind of, uh, yeah. So what, what, what would you expect here if n1 and n2 are uh, like uh, more general or more, uh, is there some some way you could uh, you have to, would it lead to some interesting nature of fluctuations or some interesting more dynamics? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Actually, uh, yes. This n one uh, phi one uh, description here is for yes. We we I say that it's uh, for quantum rotator. So especially we will assume that the spectrum of n is uh, is uh, is uh, is, uh, is positive and negative and. Uh, it's, it, it will not actually describe the, the number of photons of uh, one cavity, for example. So it will be a, an approximation for the description of the state of the cavity, which is valid at high, at high value in the number of, 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 of photons. When the, when the cavity is, is, is at a, a, large, a large number of, of, of photons. Yeah, OK. I uh, yeah. understand. So, so this is yes. Yeah, so this is uh, one 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 specific uh, case, but uh, but this uh, description is uh, entirely valid for for example to describe the phase and the number of the uh, pair uh, at the uh, for for Josephson junction, the difference of phase for for two superconductors in, in the in the number of copper pairs for for Josephson junction, where in this case n can take negative values and phase is just superconducting phase. So it is another, another example we, where we have this number n conjugated to a phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. Nice. Uh, so maybe uh, any further question? Okay. Then actually, I have probably one more question. So you said that you would mention something about the fluctuations and uh, but yes uh, about this uh, fluctuations that you see in the pumping rates and all. Yes, so uh, you, uh, indeed, I, I, I did not uh, rediscuss the, 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 the fluctuations, and uh, actually, so we we saw that. Uh, we, we will uh, recover exactly, so here in this equation, we will recover exactly the, the equation of motion, the hybrid equation of motion, when, uh, when we do not average on this, uh, on, the, on this phase distribution. So if we want to recover the, uh, the hybrid classical uh, quantum description, the phase have not to, to fluctuate, actually. But if the phase does not fluctuate, the number of quanta uh, will fluctuate. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, yes, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fluctuations would depend on the, uh, is there some universal nature of it, like? Yes, and, and so, and so uh, for, for example, we can, uh, we can try to, to prepare this kind of this kind of states, which are uh, which fluctuates, uh, which which uh, which are uh, which are well localized in n one and n two, which fluctuates uh, 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 as less as we can. But actually, we uh, we I did not uh, present it, this in this talk, but we will have some topological obstruction to reduce 
the, the fluctuation in N1 and N2 for such a state. When we, mm. when we will want to, to reduce the, the fluctuation in N1 and N2, actually, mm. it, we will have the, the chain number will obstruct the, us to localize them uh, infinitely. Actually. The, the, this kind of very specific state, we cannot be uh, entirely localized in N1 and N2 uh, due to, to the chain number. Actually. It is, we have an obstruction here, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So is there a possibility that you could do some tomography of the initial state based on fluctuation statistics and all that? Uh, yes, it, it, it will be uh, very interesting then to, uh, to, uh, to actually measure this kind of, uh, this kind of, uh, of distribution uh, experimentally, is, is this kind of distribution N1 and N2, to directly measure the, 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 the fluctuation in N1 and N2. And what we will see is that uh, the, the fluctuation in N1 and N2 of the part of the state which bump in one direction uh, will be uh, will be non zero. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, but uh, but this uh, this thing doesn't tell you about the correlations between N1 and N2, does it? Or this, uh, this so kind of... actually, we, we see that uh, there is a correlation between N1 and N2. Of, of course, because uh, one part of the state uh, goes in one direction and one part of the state goes in, in the other direction. But I, I did not uh, put here some uh, other plot here. But uh, for other uh, interesting states, when we try to localize them in N1 and N2, what the, 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 the fluctuation we, which uh, developed are very correlated in the two, in the two variables. So we will see some uh, some circular correlation in N1 and N2, and yes, this is a working progress yes, to to analyze this uh, these correlations and the fluctuation more precisely between uh, between N1 and N2 essentially. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So thanks. Uh, uh, thanks for this very nice talk. It was very interesting. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was good to have you here, and you. it was good to have you also, uh, Benoit, and to uh, see you. And, and, uh, Thanks for the invitation, yeah. Ian. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So let me stop recording.